Ahoy pirates! Awesome you are here. In the Live You Ikigai podcast for digital nomads. I'm Captain Ikigai and I'm so happy you are here. I have lived for over 10 years as a digital nomad around the world. I'm going to share my experience and want to inspire others. This first episode is quite funny and relaxing at the same time. I'm talking about toilet cleaning, living in a van before the smartphone time, and current challenges, as well as advice for digital nomads. I'm super excited because today marks the first collaboration with RW Lab, a 30,000 people strong digital nomad community. Let's surf right in. Hey, Captain, welcome to our channel, and we're really happy to have you here. And first of all, could you briefly introduce yourself to our audience and let us know what we are doing right now? Yeah, hey, Kim, I'm super excited. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you for having me. I'm super um, happy to hear from you guys. And yeah, um, so I think my journey started like in 10 years ago, around 2011. And I've been living like all over the world since then. And currently I am actually what you define as a digital nomad. Before I was also doing other things around the world. Um, and currently I do live in Japan um, since six months and I stay another half a year. And yeah, I'm super excited to share my experience and help others with it and um, motivate others to do so as well, to live their own purpose and their own happy life <laughs> can't wait to hear your stories and so since you have lived all over the world i guess you definitely have lots of working experiences don't you so would you mind sharing some with us <laughs> yeah sure um oh my god i had so many different jobs <laughs> from toilet cleaning yes when i before i used to study and i couldn't find a job to like i don't know selling surfboards in a mall to um actually working for the german embassy like in my last journeys or um being in an international organization or being a human rights activist um different volunteering jobs i even become a snowboard instructor and i used to actually work as a snowboard instructor as well um oh my god i had so many different things <laughs> But yeah, I did study in between um, until I finished my master's degree and then I found a job I'm currently doing. So currently I'm actually employed in a very big consultancy. And um, yeah, it's actually the kind of nine to five job. But yeah, I can do it however I um, like it and wherever I like it. So this gives me the most freedom ever. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure that there are lots of stories behind those experiences. And so when was the first time you feel like, mm, I'm kind of living a nomadic lifestyle? Um, where we thought like I'm living somewhere else and work as well. I've, yeah, that was in New Zealand too. Yeah, in New Zealand 2011. Um, but at the time I had like, yeah, I had so many really horrible jobs. And while I was there, at the time I just finished um, a graphic design degree. And I was really young. I think I was like 21 at the time. And... Um, yeah, it's been really tough because my English wasn't good at all. I could barely introduce myself. Oh, really? And but, yeah, yeah, if something, maybe if, yeah. I know. But I can't even believe that I studied in English and have a full degree in English. <laughs> but yeah, it was uh, learning by doing. It was a hard, um, <laughs> it was a hard time. And I think yeah, that's where it started. And at the time, I had so little money, um, even though I got support also from home, doing what I love. But. Uh, that I realized in New Zealand, I mean, New Zealand is super expensive, um, that I cannot even survive in like hostels or guest houses. So <laughs> we bought a van back then and lived in a van. And remember the time, like back then there was no smartphone. I think the first smartphone came out in like 2012 or something. So when I came back to Europe at the time, I was like, what is that thing? What is everybody having in their hands? So I like, and there wasn't like a van life, right? What we see right now on like YouTube and like, oh, the pros and cons and da, da, da. everything started that one year in New Zealand. <laughs> oh my God, it is so cool. You know, your experience just reminds me of a movie called Into the Wild. Have you ever watched that movie? It is one of my favorite ones. Oh yeah, I, yeah. 
I really like the conclusion at the end, right? Where he actually dies alone because he realizes he needs to share the experience to be happy. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, happiness needs to be shared. Okay, so did you take any photos or videos or maybe write something down at a time? I'm really interested in your wild life stories. Um, yes. I remember I had this really old Sony Ericsson, the silver one, you know, with the tiny little buttons. And we had like... <laughs> I mean, um, with that, I remember we took also pictures sometimes. But I did have a really good camera with me, like a Canon 500D. And um, I... I'm pretty good in Photoshop, so I did a lot of panoramic pictures. And back then, you did not have a phone to scan, right? So you can look around with like a 180 degree view. So I put all those pictures together to have like super nice panorama pics. So wherever I went, I have those, um, yeah, panorama pics. And it wasn't really, um, I didn't film really. And I really didn't take so, the selfies weren't a thing yet, right? So we didn't really took it. Like we have pictures, I think, of us, but yeah. I do have some, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it would be so great that maybe in the future you're going to share with us more about your van traveling stories. <laughs> it is such a unique experience. And because, you know, I followed a lot of people on Instagram and they share the gorgeous nature and the, I would say, the elegant van life. Yeah, yeah. so it is quite attractive. But it is so. I think so. like I started also watching some like some years ago when it like really raised and I was like it seems so like not all of them they can also be very honest and don't want to put that down at all but it seems like I had a different experience because I did not have that luxury of like oh yeah I customize and here's a toilet and a shower and no we had nothing we literally just had like a mattress <laughs> and, and like oh my god we took like showers at the beach and because they had like free water there or like, um, yeah, we have no toilet, for example. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was a different life, especially when the um, seasons changed. So we started in the summer and got into, no, we started in spring, got into summer. And at some, some point we were in the South Island and realized, oh my God, there's snow on the mountains. We don't even have like winter wheels uh winter what do you call that yeah wheels on the bed like we have to go to the north it's too cold like no heater nothing oh my it's just a huge difference so if i were you i probably couldn't handle that ladies and gentlemen and everyone in between shred the like button and so as you mentioned your living conditions were not that good and your van was not quite uh, equipped so do you think you felt but suffering during that period or do you think um, this is such a memorable experience and I wanted to try it again I would do it again but it has to be much more like serious <laughs> um, but also what I recognized is for me back then I really realized I mean, education and language is everything so it, I, even though I had an education and it came per village from a Western country, right? They had no chance to find actually a job or have money. So I was kind of suffering in the sense of, yes, you have the whole freedom in the world. You can go whatever you do, but you have so little money. You cannot get, not experience everything. So I think if I would do it again, um, also I would change a little bit the location. So because I had a partner at the time and we were doing that together, we were really secluded to everybody else. Even though we stayed at some beaches and met some other people, events and whatsoever, we were only us two. So it can get really lonely, this van life thing. If this is your thing, yeah, go for it. But I realized like I like being with people. I like also living with people in their communities and meet more people the whole time. So yeah, that's a really big point. <laughs> yeah, I understand. So you said that you felt lonely living in a van and you wanted to socialize with people. So have you ever joined a digital nomadic community and experienced the atmosphere there since then? I mean, I would love to, but to be honest, never. I, I heard about that. I mean, Spain just opened up for digital nomad visa, right? Um, also Portugal, Lisboa, I think, and around like Cascais, right? 
and Madeira, I think, and like the Canary Islands. I did travel there, um, but I never really lived there. So to be honest, I do not really have an experience with those countries. I did live though, but this was more in my student time. I did live in Amsterdam and also in Copenhagen. Um, but to be honest, I, I also don't know. So not yet. I'm super open-minded. I hope to meet more people. I do not know any communities yet. And I also didn't join anything online. So I'm just in a time of exploring right now and see what is out there. So I, I'm really happy to actually connect with you because this is super international. This is not just secluded to like the European Union, for example, or like um, just around Indonesia. Like this is much more because I think that community is huge when you look at the whole world. Yeah, yeah I totally got to point. And so, yeah, we are really happy to have you here, which makes our podcast more international. And so what kind of atmosphere are you looking for and what kind of equipment uh, you think the community should have? Otherwise, it will have a negative impact on your life quality. And so what are your expectations of the community? Um, definitely diversity and diversity in the sense of everybody is welcome. Doesn't matter where they're from, doesn't matter the ethnicity, their gender identity, their sexuality or whatsoever, that all of that works together. Because like, I haven't experienced anything bad yet, but usually how I live is um, with other people and especially that it's mixing with locals. I like more like so far, I didn't live in any just digital nomad community, right? When they're all together. So I have I did not experience that yet. But from my my feeling is I also want to connect with the locals, right? I just don't want to like be around those people who have only that lifestyle because you get really in your bubble. Um, so I think that's one point I would love, even when it's just events and you invite locals who are interested in or whatsoever, like that, that there's some interconnection kind of thing. And yeah, ha, ha, we just talked about it before <laughs> this podcast here, internet connection, right? <laughs> um, I mean, so far I never really had that problem, um, but I was all, like, I'm also planning a lot. Like I'm looking up before and measuring even like um, how good the internet is and also select via that where I can live. Um, that's definitely, and I think I mean, it can be remote, but it should also be somehow accessible. Um, so I, I love big cities, definitely, but I also love being somewhere in the mountains. I had like this really wonderful experience that some months ago, I was in the Japanese Alps and I found a super small village and actually just wanted to stay, I think one night or two even, because there was like a festival. And then I met the owner of this guest house and the guest house was like a super old Ryokan, you know, with this fire pit. And I liked it so much, even though it was raining the whole time. I stayed there for a long time. So I think atmosphere and like the feeling of home, like this is so important to create that because that's how you attract um, people and also how they would like to stay there for a longer time and have that connection, right? So that communal space is, is like... Yeah, one of the big points and like whoever is living with those people together or like even if they're not living together, they're coming together to work somewhere together. It should be feeling like you can just be yourself and it feels like home, like wherever you go. So for me, I think those were the big points and like supporting each other, I guess, like that you're not secluded in like, I hear some stories where, especially about visas where people have actually knowledge about it because they did it for a longer time, but they're not really sharing their knowledge. And if they share their knowledge, they get like an affiliate because they reference somebody like some agency or something. So I, I would, uh, I don't know if I would do that. Like, because I mean, yes, you want to build trust, right? And of course they also have to survive somehow. But I think like in the community, you should share things like that. Um, it's, yeah, because you're a community, right? You're building up trust. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Diversity and feeling like whole and building trust are quite critical. And also, um, so in terms of what you said about sharing the experience, I actually had a really good example that I want to share with you. 
And so I'm currently organizing events for and activities for Digital Nomad Week in the Yellow Mountain community. And we invite people from a different fields to live together. And so they share the skills, uh, like, you know, the knowledge of the metaverse and the MPO foundation, life coach. And sometimes, you know, we had um, relationship, a discussion, yeah, which has, I would say, it has so much fun. And I feel like, you know, sharing makes people more connected. And meanwhile, uh, at some point, to give others some inspiration. So, yeah, and uh, I really hope that one day you can come to China and join our activities. That would be cool. Love to actually come. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I will come. I will really try to come to China. Oh my God. Yes. No, it sounded, it sounded great. I mean, you just sent me pictures uh, some days ago and not just the nature. I saw the vibe, like where people were just meditating with each other. Oh my God. So cliche. <laughs> but like, I mean, it works, right? Because this builds, builds something and you have that connection for a long time and you will remember it. Even though like you do it several times somewhere else, you will remember like, oh yeah, that was there and there. And I met that person with that connection. And for that, I met somebody else. I had that collaboration. Yes, I would love that. <laughs> Definitely. So then welcome to China and join our community. Um, so yeah, it is really difficult to find people with the same uh, vibration. And um, so did you have some connection with others on your journey? Like the people who really got along with you or whose lifestyles were, uh, was quite inspiring. Yeah, several times. And I think that's, that's one of the big goes for becoming a digital nomad, right? You want to have all those experiences and different stories and perspectives. And actually, even though we all, like, even though we said we super open-minded, oh my God, we so close-minded, like all of us. But so, yeah, I met like people, in, not just who inspired me, but shaped me in a way over all those years. Uh, it, it's incredible. Like from, wait, what can, what pops in my mind right now? Um, some shamans um, I lived in South Korea for a while in Seoul and um, in Myeongdong and I don't even know how I think it was at the subway station however like yeah two shamans and they their lifestyle and what they could tell me I never had that perspective or I um, some human rights activists who their whole life, they're just focusing on what they're doing. That like, that's their ikigai, on like having more equality, or um, from local stories of like fishermen I met who take me out for fishing, to like, um, like yeah, that that's a crazy one. I um like super rich people who just also humans, and you connect with them and. You meet them somewhere else in the world because they even have more freedom because they have so much money. Um, to, yeah, so many, so many stories, so many different people. Like, mm. <laughs> uh, you know what? I really want to hear more stories from you. Maybe in the future we can probably do another podcast. For people, for people's stories, yeah, sure, I can. I feel like the people we were connected on the road at some point can be our turning points and can shape our lives. Yeah, so they are, I would say, our treasure, the treasure of the memory. And yeah, so after the people you met, let's say, have you ever worked at some unique office locations? Because I found some photos online and some people, they work on the beach and some people work at a train station, etc. So I'm wondering if you have any creative working places. I did it all. <laughs> I feel... Do you want to hear like the most craziest ones? Like where you're like, why would you do that? Or what kind of, okay. Um, it, it just something popped to my mind. So I, <laughs> as I said, right, I was in the winter time. I was on Hokkaido and in some weeks it actually got like, I think it was minus 31 degrees. <laughs> it was so great. It was just some days. Not the whole, I mean, I like it because I, when I have the proper gear on, like I don't mind. And when you move the whole time, you're warm, but I remember I had one week a meeting and I knew the time frame and I, I planned it also to have it the meeting on the mountain, but I realized my internet connection because I got a good internet provider for my mobile phone, which I usually use as a hotspot, 
doesn't work so well in the bottom of the mountain. So in the last moment, I was like, no, the internet's too bad here. So I went with the snowboard gear, like in full gear, in that super cold weather, all the way up the mountain and sat on top of the mountain to have that meeting. <laughs> but it was super funny. Like everything worked out, but I was like, wow, okay, this is this is next level. <laughs> like I haven't done this one before. <laughs> because usually I would sit, <laughs> usually you would sit in a hut, right? Where it's warm and there, uh, um, yeah, they have some ramen there or whatsoever. But there was nothing else. <laughs> I mean, they, but they have all the antennas there, right? So the internet is great. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, the yeah, top um, of the snow mountain. Well, <laughs> it's it just not like what I see from the well, photos. <laughs> but it's also like, as you know, right? I don't have like, well, I do have a social media account for business, but I don't have LinkedIn. Uh, sorry, I do have LinkedIn, but I don't have like Instagram or Facebook. So you won't <laughs> see me posting pics like that. But yeah, I can imagine that like, you always see it. Uh, you always see those people right at like beautiful places sitting at the beach, like half in bikini. And like, but what I don't get is like, I mean, we've done it all, right? Whoever is listening. But what I don't get, like I have, I'm currently working with two different laptops because I have like different clients. And depending on the screen, so my private one has an OLED screen, so it's really reflecting. And one of the other ones I have, I cannot even work when it's too light or like too bright. Because you cannot see. So I don't know what they're doing or have, uh, maybe they have like super dark screen to code or whatever. But I, like, I, my experience was like, yeah, I kind of have to sit half inside or really in the shade. So, <laughs> shadow, shade, <laughs> shade somewhere to actually work and concentrate because I cannot see what I'm doing. <laughs> and also, what people forget is like, I lived in the Caribbean for a while and, and that time, um, there's a lot of um, sand coming from the Sahara over the Atlantic. Even like you can also see it in the air. And if your laptop is exposed the whole time outside, so if you would sit there at the beach, maybe you don't feel it, but the laptop does feel it. The sand gets everywhere. And also not that, like when you're um, living at the shore for some time, there is salt in the air, even when you're on a sailboat. So I try to wrap my my gear the whole time in like um, f like proper secured that when I don't use it nothing gets in there because yeah your technology just gets destroyed much quicker like nobody thinks about those things you know <laughs> but it comes with, with experience when you're like why is my laptop not like why what's going on with this keyboard yeah <laughs> yeah we can always learn the lessons from our experiences so you mentioned the technology and the environment could be the challenges so are there any other challenges to be a digital nomad? So do you have any other, uh, any advice for those who want to live as digital nomad? So yeah, what I saw in the people who like lived that lifestyle and then, then stopped, they had obviously different reasons. But I think money is one of the biggest factors, even though like money is just an exchange, right? But they did not have a plan B. So it was not like, okay, if this goes wrong, what am I going to do now? Um, so I think from my experience over all those years, and yes, I also have anxiety sometimes, um, a lot actually, but like life shapes you and it goes in so different directions, right? That you're really like adoptable, but that's like one of the factors you have to be really be aware of when you have that lifestyle that you have to adopt so quickly to situations. Like everything is continuously changing. I mean, general in life, everything is changing. Nothing stops, but it changes so quickly. And so, yeah, plan B, I think, is, is a thing. So I know currently I do not own anything. Like I did, never bought a house or anything or a boat. Well, I did buy a little boat once, which sucks, but <laughs> I cannot live on it. But so, but I know like so far my family is still alive and they would support me in any way. So this is kind of my backup. This is my plan B. If something goes wrong, I can always say like, hey, can I be here for a month? Sorry. And they would say yes. But... I know, like, this is a very big privilege as well because some people don't have that. So I think a backup is good, even when it's a friend or, like, um, somewhere stable. So I build up my community around the world, right? When something goes wrong here right now for me in Japan, I know, ex like, I have that one person I can go to here in Japan or somewhere else which is, are really close to me and they would do everything to help me. But that's, that took time, right? Of course. But I know if I if I contact them, I have a backup. So I think that's that's one. And like, yeah, be it super adaptive to anything. For example, I had actually a, ah, this story. 
Yes, in Japan. That's so crazy. My bag got stolen last weekend. Oh my really? Like, in, in Japan. Japan. In, in, in Japan. Like what? I like I I went to so crazy places in the world which like had a lot of crime, but nothing ever happens because I'm actually really careful. But somebody stole it between my legs. I couldn't believe it. And um yeah, you have to adopt to that. I mean I'm super lucky that my wallet was in my pocket in my phone. But yeah, all those little things, I was like, oh no, my power bank, which I use every day, is gone. I really need to power bank. A bag, like, I wanted to film, like, another Matsuri, like, another festival the other day. And it's like, I don't have a bag to put my gimbal in. Like, I can't even, ah, oh. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like, this is something little. It's not a big thing, right? It's not like, I had a friend who uh, were traveling and also trying to find a job. And actually, um, she she broke her leg. And this is how a journey ends. Like, yes, then you go. You have to go to the hospital. You probably fly wherever you come from and you will lay there until this is healed. But this is just, this is part of it, right? Everything can happen the whole time. But yeah, be aware that things can change. And well, job security, I can just speak for myself. I had like, I tried to find a job in the middle of COVID times and it was so hard for me. It was incredibly hard. And now I'm so grateful for what I have. But I think this is also everything. I, it's, Yes, you can build it around freelance work and um, other communities supporting each other and whatsoever, but it is, it is. I think, it gives you a different security when there's a job where you know, okay, this pays you every month. Like, you can do that. Um, yeah, and then, of course, life can get in between, right? You fall in love with the love in your, of your life. But if that's even possible, that's a decision nomad. <laughs> because, I mean, you are, like, you have a connection with someone and usually... So um, currently I'm like every three months somewhere else, but I planned it that way. Right? I could actually stay like a one year at some point in Japan, but I wanted to see everything. So, but it's hard, right? You you are dating, like seeing someone and then they're realizing, wow, your lifestyle is so different from whatever. And that's actually the interesting part, but yes, you could do that too, but do you want that? And then it doesn't fit. So if, I mean, I saw some stories <laughs> online where, they were living like that and they met someone and they're living like that together. This can happen, obviously, but it's not common, I would say. It is It is different because you're always on the go, right? You're always somewhere else. So having a deeper connection, even though I hear like, what is it? You have like 200 hours to become like friends and trust each other. And then I don't know what happened. Like there are different stages, right? Even that, um, yeah. Someday it clicks, sometimes not. So I think you have to be very aware about that as well. You're your love life or like your friendship life. It's like I have great friends um, who like, even though I wouldn't talk to them for like having a year or one year, I have that. The, the day we text or the, we speak, it's like there was no time in between and nobody is judging because they know how we live. Like it doesn't matter. So that that's like, you should be aware of that. If uh, Yeah, that can happen and it does happen to me. But for me, it doesn't matter because I know I'm supported somewhere and I'm, yeah, I'm so happy about that. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. It is always important to make a plan B just in case the plan doesn't work out. So some challenges come from the outside world, like money, safety, and technology, environment. But I think uh, mental health can also be a big challenge because, you know, uh, there's some uh, women around me that are just a little bit anxious because they would like to be digital nomads because they want more freedom and they want to experience the world but they just have age anxiety since they have worked for a few years and they're just around their 30s and 30 years old i would say it is probably a serious topic in east asian countries because it is time to get married or have a family for most of people and so if you want to become a digital nomad, if you want to choose a new lifestyle, which means you won't settle in one place. And uh, also, it probably will bring some risks and that you probably have never experienced before. So I don't know if you have age anxiety or if Westerners have it. It's such an interesting question. I never thought about age anxiety. I mean, I know like currently I'm, I'm 32 right now so in the beginning of my 30s don't get it but i mean it's also in western cultures right get married settle down have a stable job have a stable life get kids da, 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 da. 
but this is all society factors, right? I I do understand it, of course, um, because life sh life shapes all the time differently, right? And I think we're in that time right now where the big changes are happening. But then again, why can you not have both? Like you could, if you actually want that, then just stop being a digital nomad or do it together with your partner or partners, right? Um, you can define your life as much as you want, but I think it's about the mindset, right? About how you how you want to live. How how do you see yourself in five years, in 10 years, and 15 days? It's like, it's so, yeah, I would say, Whatever makes you happy and you feel that way, do it. And life will shape after it, right? Like you create that yourself. I know it sounds so free spirited what I say right now. And I had some moments in my life where I had major anxiety and I didn't know what to do. I I was so desperate. Like I I needed so much support. But then you couldn't fall back, right? That like there will be someone who's helping you. And even like maybe you to to know what career to tell you. Hey, look, you actually want to have a child right now. Maybe settle down for that time and maybe go on when the child is old enough that you can travel more. Or you actually do it with the child. I mean, you see it on social media everywhere, right? They're doing it. So you can, yeah, just define it yourself. But uh, yeah, I think what we need are probably sort of courage to start and stop whenever we want it. And. Uh, because, you know, sometimes it is really hard to make decisions because we have to consider so many things. And also it takes time to find ourselves. Mm. Okay. So I'm wondering what change um, does this kind of lifestyle bring to you? And can you use the three words to describe the life before and after becoming the digital nomad? Yeah, sure. Let me think. Mm. Before, yeah, well, before I used to study, before I, so I would say, yeah, like kind of learning before, but not really life experience. It was like more plain, like educational learning. Then waiting, I kind of felt I was waiting the whole time for something and like dreaming. Yeah, I would say waiting, waiting for what? Yet it felt like there's more and I felt like I really want to explore. So kind of, I, I, I felt like I was waiting for something, <laughs> which is not happening because you don't take an action. So you're like waiting, 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 like, well, okay, when is this happening? Right timing. <laughs> yeah, exa yeah, exactly. And, to this, yeah. and then um, when my life changed, yeah, I doubt, like, also, I mean, it was also like ups and downs the whole time, right? but I would say, let's say like three positive words afterwards, um, definitely free, like freedom. Um, yeah, more happiness, as I said, and like living, like really living. I mean, it's so hard to be in one moment. It's still for me, like sometimes I'm like somewhere else with my heart. But I, when I really feel, you know, with those small moments, you're like, oh my God, I realize every, like I'm right now here. And yet it's just such a, such a split second. You're like, yeah, this is life. Like you're so grateful to be here like being alive this is life like living yeah i think the first word would be living <laughs> yeah or well, like awareness kind of like yeah aware that you be ah it sounds so weird but yeah awareness of being <laughs> oh yeah i like the word of being but not doing and you know we we just live at the present and the system moment yeah but it's hard huh it's so hard to do that <laughs> it's so hard Oh, yeah, it is just so hard. And I've tried to do that, but I always worry too much. You always think, yeah. I always worry, like, if one day my money runs out, what am I going to supposed to do? And just lots of questions come to my mind and just cannot get rid of. Oh, no. We have to grow some crops somewhere so we can eat. Yeah, I mean, but I've been, I've been so desperate, like, before when I had no money. I remember I got in a big fight with my ex partner then and I was so angry because it was money related. It was so stupid. And I got so angry and then I remember I went to the beach and there was a lot a lot of driftwood. I was so angry. I was just a lot of driftwood. So the um wood which it's like wood which gets spelled uh, like um to the shore. 
and it's like those beautiful sticks, right? Shaped by the water and by the winds and the, the currents. And I was so angry. I was smashing everything. Like, oh my God, my life. Why am I doing that? Why am I? Oh my God. Like, why don't I have money? Like, so I smashed everything. And at some point, <laughs> I like settled down and I just sit on one of those woods. And I was like, oh, okay. So exhausted. And then I looked at that, that wood, right? And I was so desperate at the moment. It's like, oh my God, this wood is so beautiful. So I picked some wood up and I remember <laughs> I came back and my ex-partner said like, what, what are you doing? I'm like, I just had an idea. I'm like, what are the idea? So I started, like, I still have some pieces actually, but only small ones. I started painting, like, like I, I like drawing and like I edited graphic design before, but I really like, like, like actually drawings. And so I did like on um, stencils, you know, like artists like Bansky, right? They do stencils with graffiti. And I did things like that before. So I cut out, um, like, uh, fonts, like saying surf or, beach or sweet ass or like whatever words like that and i had some spray paint left from what what i used for something else and i spray painted those driftwood sticks and then i started to sell them and it actually worked i was actually selling driftwood i found at the beach and, and we could like yeah we made some money with that and could move on you know to get to the next step so since that moment i know whatever happens in my life doesn't matter how desperate I'm going to be. There is a moment where something is going to happen because you want to live on, right? There will be some click moment. You're like, you're going for it. Come on, we can do this. <laughs> the universe will guide us to that moment, right? <laughs> yeah, somehow. <laughs> oh, that moment. <laughs> yeah, and the, you know, the, the chances are in our way. And it just reminds me of... Uh, Chinese saying called the Tian Wu Zhe Ren Zhi Lu, uh, which means that God probably shuts all the doors, but uh, He will always leave a window open. So yeah, that is my understanding. I'm not sure if my translation is correct, but yeah, I just I don't know why you know the words just start to occur to my mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get, I get it. Oh wow, yeah, because energy is like every like uh, me being spiritual then. <laughs> Yeah, energy kind of guides you, right? Yes. Oh, that's such a nice saying. Wow. Thanks for introducing. <laughs> mm, so, hope we can find more moments like this. Um, okay, so here comes the last question. How do you feel about the trend of being digital nomads? So, do you think the trend is good for the development of the countries or the people? Well... I definitely would say it's a trend because it's quite new also that this lifestyle is possible and um, also reachable for many people. I'm also super excited for the next generation to come, Generation Z, right? They have a completely different mindset. I'm I'm wowed by them. Um, let's see. I'm super excited what to come. And, but it also really depends on policies, right? I mean, COVID changed everything and governments and also companies are adapting to that so more and more companies getting remote more and more startups i see especially in western countries are more open-minded for like workation kind of things not completely digital nomad but like workation so it's going in that direction definitely but what i would say what we should all be aware of is like is it ethnicity around it so what i hear is like they're living some people you know in a villa somewhere at the beach in a community next to a slums yeah of local people and they're just kind of abusing the system or like if you like the privilege and they do not i don't maybe they're just not aware maybe just we have to tell them like hey maybe try to connect with the locals or like do something for them get i don't know got somehow involved that we help each other it's not just our community like we live somewhere on other grounds where other people are right and like I heard about also from a friend who uh, lives in Barcelona for like he is from Catalans like he is from there but he told me since they opened up their digital nomad visa and yes they do pay more tax and whatsoever like yeah that's all created by the government it's fine but what they don't consider is some rents are raise, raising so much that some locals cannot afford renting anymore so yeah there are so many things to think about so I you you should really consider if you're having that lifestyle try to also contribute where you are like be aware around or your surrounding doesn't matter where it is in the world and also like that's what i like i think my big vision is whatever happens with this channel i'm having or the brand i'm creating right now 
I hope maybe either maybe it becomes also community or an NGO, but it would be nice to actually solve that problem statement of every digital nomad to actually have a connection with locals co to contribute because aren't we like all like li little ambassadors of ourselves, doesn't matter where we're from and having the connection with others. So it actually creates a more, and maybe that's just a big vision, like a more peaceful way of living, right? When we all connect it and we're all having different perspectives. So yeah, that's the, that's the point. <laughs> but yeah, I hope, you know, maybe when our audience are listening to our podcast, probably can get some motivation and inspirations. That would be so great, you know, to build up people's awareness to help the locals. Yeah, this is a meaningful thing. Mm -hmm. And here comes the end of the conversation. Uh, thanks for your time. And is there anything that you want to say to our Chinese audience? I'm super happy that you invited me and I would love to come and meet you. Yeah, me too. Hope to see you in China. Become part of the Pirate Crew and subscribe or share. Check out my other videos on YouTube for digital nomads and how to organize living as one. Still here? Check out the Ikigai merch. See you in the next one. Cheers and live your Ikigai. Check out here what you need to know before living in Japan. <laughs>